G'day guys, today we're going to have a look at my reset shells for Normans. The three big cultures I really love to look at and this channel has a lot of focus on are the so-called Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons, particularly in what is today England and also the Normans and how these three cultures intertwined with each other, interacted with each other and influenced each other. There was a whole lot of that. Okay guys, let's take a look at these books. First book is The Normans by R. Brown. I picked this up at a uh, secondhand bookshore, bookstore, I think for about $5. Fantastic purchase. And this book has uh, so much really good information in it. It's really, really fascinating that, um, I find it very fascinating that so much is known about some of the different kings of England, especially the later ones. If you think about I think King Henry VIII, we know where he was to the day uh, at around about 80% of his reign. Whereas in terms of someone like William the Conqueror, we can actually only place him uh, at a specific location for around about 30, uh, for only around about 20% of his career, if that. So there's so much information which uh, I guess is a little bit speculative, but it's also, there's a lot of really good information out there to get. And if Normans are your sort of particular area, the Normans and the Plantagenists, then uh, these books are really, really good to have. The Norman Knight from 950 to 1204. Um, a really fantastic book. Uh, Osprey, I absolutely love these books. There's so much really good source material in them. The pictures and the illustrations are fantastic. There's uh, some really good descriptions of the pictures that, and there's a lot of detail in these pictures that a lot of people would otherwise miss. And I think uh, Osprey books are fantastic because they are the instigators for so many people getting into things like medieval reenactment and their passions for medieval history. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. Robert Bartlett, England under the Norman and Angevian Kings. My pronunciation is terrible. However, this is a, a thoroughly comprehensive book. Um, it's done by Oxford Press, and I, I think, you know, this is a really good source material. Not a whole lot of illustrations, um, but it does look at events so well, and it really pulls out some of the details, and I think that is fantastic. Um, a truly good book to get. Many of these books you can get secondhand. You can buy them um, online, or you can get you know the ebook versions, which are usually less expensive. Secondhand books, obviously, secondhand bookstores, charity shops, that kind of thing, and some of the uh, the book festivals as well are really good resources to get and and go through if you've got a little bit of spare time. The Normans, Warriors and Their Castle by Christopher Garnet. Um, this is a really, really, really good book. Um, and I think it really demonstrates and shows the technological advances that were occurring with the Normans and this particular period of time being like the late 11th century, the 10 hundreds, and the 12th century being the 11 hundreds specifically. The Normans were not that popular amongst the people. They brought themselves in as, uh, I guess in their eyes, they were liberators, they were conquerors and everyone else was a peasant as far as they were concerned. Um, and it's, it's interesting because this obviously brought about many rebellions, many, many rebellions, and the, the Norman response was incredibly um, robust and it was very decisive. So um, there's some really good books here. With those... Um, with that 
kind of response from the Normans came about huge technological advances in terms of defensive structures, armor, weapons, transport, uh, logistics, tactics, uh, and specifically the development of castles. The Normans by Osprey. As I say, Osprey books are absolutely fantastic and there's so many really good ones out there. I think I got this one for around about $10 second hand. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I really love the Osprey books for their um, the way that they describe things and show things because if you look at so many of the kind of e-commerce websites that are out there, you know, they'll describe a, for example, helmet as um, 11th century or something when in fact it was more of a sort of 14th century at the earliest. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of reenactors have th that I know of have been getting themselves a lot of this gear. I'm the same. Um, you know, I have my own little pile of shame. And um, so these kind of source books can be really good to have, and they're not that expensive. And if you look them up, um, you know, there can be some, some really great information there. Norman Stone Castles are really good book to have. I think it dispels a lot of myths um, that you tend to be sold by, uh, I guess, the fairy tale of history. Uh, a lot of people look at these castles and think that they just transitioned from something like, you know, um, a, a simple wooden Motton Bailey castle into something like what we see today at the um, Tower of London. And obviously that transition took place over hundreds of years. Um, many hundreds of years when the different bits and pieces were added on, refined, rebuilt, repurposed. So there we go. Uh, really good book though to have uh, and I think Osprey does such an amazing job with its um, the way it delivers information. The second installment of that book, Norman Stone Castles number two. This particular book focuses on the years 950 to 1204 uh, and it is really amazing um, uh, and you can see the technological advancements from the earlier phases in these stone castles and the influence that things like the Crusades have had and the various rebellions that were taking place and how those events had impacted on the design of castles. Right, you guys, please leave a comment below. I'd really love to hear what your recommendations are for books on castles. I'd really love to hear what you think about my, car, my books and my library. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.